What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to talk about question 28 and the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. This question gives us this wonky, crazy thing with a bunch of triangles in it and says that triangle JLK is a right triangle, point P is the midpoint of side JK, and segment PQ is parallel to segment JL. It also tells us that the length of this segment, PK, is 4, and the length of this one, PQ, is 2. And we're supposed to find the perimeter of this triangle here, PQL. Now this question is a doozy. It covers a lot of geometry, including ideas of similar triangles, special right triangles, and the Pythagorean theorem. There's a lot to cover here, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I know that these two sides are parallel. Next thing I'm going to do is remind myself that midpoint means that this part and this part are all the same length. And now I'm going to remind myself that I actually have three triangles in this problem that I'm interested in. So I'm going to draw each of them individually. So I have this one here, J... K, L. I have a tiny one up here, poorly drawn, but it's triangle P, K, Q. And then I have one that looks a lot like it, just flipped over, P, Q, L. And that's the one I'm most interested in, triangle P, Q, L, because it's shaded and we're specifically told that we're trying to find its perimeter. So let's go ahead and fill in some of the information that I know. I know that this side and this side are parallel, and that this can be split up into two congruent sides, one of which is also con congruent to this one. Now at this point, I'm going to remember my similar triangles, and I'm going to remember that the idea of similar triangles says that if these two lines are parallel, I actually have this small triangle, this one and this big triangle, this one, as similar triangles. And any side on this small one is going to be half the length of the corresponding side on this big one. We can see this from this side being one of these and this side on the big triangle being two of these. So this one's double this one. This one is half of this one, so that checks out. Um, but let's go ahead and extend some of that information. The problem tells me that this one is two this one's four, this one's four, which means this one's four, and the whole thing is eight. Now, if this one's two, the corresponding side is this parallel one, JL, and that's double two. So that one's actually going to be four. If this one's two, then this one's two. So with a problem like this, I'll just pause here and say that there's a lot of information to fill in. And actually, I think questions like this are ridiculous because they claim to test something but just go way too far and, and mostly end up confusing kids. I'm even getting a little confused right now and I teach this stuff. But anyway, let's move on. Because the next thing I'll note is about angles. The angles that are in the same place on the big triangle and the little triangle are going to have the same degrees. So if this one's 60, that one's 60 as well. If this one is a right angle, this one's a right angle which means that both of these are going to have all the leftover degrees. Okay, sorry for the weird cut, but um, I wanted to go ahead and just talk about how we're going to use the two angles of a triangle that we know to find an angle that we don't know. And if or when this cuts back to the original paper, you'll actually be able to see that I didn't write out everything correctly. Uh, I didn't write what I was thinking and what I was saying. But anyway, if we have a 90 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, and an unknown angle, we know that those three angles of our triangle will always add up to 180 degrees. So combining like terms, 90 plus 60 gets me 150. So 150 plus something equals 180. Using fact families or equations or however you want to think of it, I flip this around so that it now says that 180 minus 150 equals this unknown number. And using subtraction or using my calculator, however you uh, would do a quick problem like this, I should get 30. So this angle here is going to be 30 degrees if we have a 90 and a 60 already. Alright, so now that I know that this is a 30-60-90 triangle, this actually helps me a little bit 
because I can go back to what I remember from class about 30, 60, 90 triangles, and I can remember the ratios between the sides on a 30, 60, 90 triangle, specifically for a triangle like this, where we have a right angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle. If my shortest side, the side across from the smallest angle, is let's call it x, my longest side is actually going to be double my shortest side, and this makes sense. Shortest side on this triangle is 2, longest side or the hypotenuse is 4, and this side over here is going to be x times the square root of 3. So I can actually use the fact that this side is 2 and this side is 4 to figure this out. So I just need to find out what 2 times the square root of 3 is. So I find my calculator, I do 2 times the square root of 3. That's about 3.46, so about 3.5. This is 3.5 or 3 and 5 tenths. And now if you look back at this triangle, this part of this long side has a twin here, which means I can pretty reasonably say that this part of this uh, longer leg has a twin down here. So if this is 3 and a half, this has to also be 3 and a half. And now I'll say that this one is a right angle. I'll remember to write that. And at this point, I just need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this one. So let me go ahead and magically erase some stuff with the power of editing so we can set up the Pythagorean theorem equation. And ta-da, this, all this stuff that was here is now gone and replaced with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm most interested in this triangle because this is the side that I'm trying to find. Since this is my hypotenuse, I'm going to call it c. And it doesn't matter which one I call a and which one I call b. But I can actually go ahead and fill in some numbers. Instead of a, I'll write 2. Instead of b, I'll write 3.5, knowing that it's about that, a little bit smaller. And I'll say that 2 squared plus 3.5 squared equals c squared. Now, first thing I need to do is figure out this side. So 2 squared plus 3.5 squared gets me 16.25, 16 and 25 hundredths. And I know that this equals c squared which means in order to get just c, I need to take the square root of 16.25. So I take the square root of 16 and 25 hundredths, and that's really, really close to 4. If we remember that our actual number for this was a little less than 3.5, we can say that we're pretty sure that this is a little less than 4.03, and just call it 4. So now, we're confident that c is 4, and now, if we're just going to look at this triangle, we need to find its perimeter. So that's 4 plus 2 plus 3 and a half, which is about 9 and a half. So after all that work, all that ridiculous geometry stuff, our answer is B, 9 and a half units.